hello, I'm so Sandy here. You can tell that it has been a really um, crazy day because I thought that I was on the Rose Alchemy page and I've just done a live, a live on my personal page. I don't know what happened. I thought that I was on Rose Alchemy, but <laughs> I wasn't. I was on my personal page. Anyway, um, I just thought I'd share the update over here as well because I know that there's quite a lot of people who are on my Rose Alchemy page but not on my personal page. So today has been quite an exciting day. Um, so um, please forgive me the fact that I actually didn't manage to come on here live I managed to get onto my personal page. Um, anyway, today I've pressed the button on the Kickstarter campaign that I'm raising funds to publish the second edition of the Rose Oracle for the Heart. And this has been a journey that I've been on since um, 2010. It's actually my life journey. I've come to the understanding and the surrender to the fact that actually the Rose Path is the path that I followed all of my life. And so it's no surprise that actually um, the journey has been as it has been. So many of us that are walking the path of the Rose have had an intense journey to get to this place. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just extraordinary. And um, mastering the technology alone, as I'm not a very um, technology savvy person, was also quite um, an interesting process. However, oh, hi, Marianne. Hello. Um, yeah, it's good morning in New York City, isn't it? Um, so, yes, the new Rose Alchemy Oracle. And I think I'm now going to be out of juice because I'm doing two videos. <laughs> Hang on a minute. This is just the craziest of um, afternoons. OK, I should be safe now. Um, yeah. The new Rose Oracle, um, it, we're, I'm republishing for two reasons. One is the fact that I've sold all of the original Rose Oracle that was published in two, 2014. And um, the reprint feels that it needs um, to include, and I've debated how to do this because I'm very aware that a thousand of the oracles have gone round the world in a five part 45 card set. And in two, 2016, um, the new, uh, four new roses came forward, which I know that many of you have already got the cosmic roses. That's the stellar gateway, the soul star, the earth star, and the Gaia gateway. And they extend the um, chakra grid um, up through the um, three master roses that sit on the crown and up and create a, like a double vesica of light that forms around the body, like an envelope of light. And within that, the diamond codes of light form in the mind's eye. So they're really, really powerful roses to, to work with and they wanted to be integrated into the new Oracle deck. I knew that when I had the Earth Star and the Soul Star that there was a Heart Star, but the Heart Star didn't want to come with these. So again, it, this, this whole journey with these has just been listening and allowing the roses to tell me when and how they wanted to work. And I have a sense that they actually have mirrored my process. So when I've been ready to embrace the fullness of what they were beginning to offer, they would step forward. So I'm giving you a sneak preview of the three roses that actually at the moment I've just got as little photographs, but that will be in the deck as proper uh, cards 
of these three higher heart chakra roses, these three, this threefold flame of the, of the Christed heart, the Christ consciousness heart. So you have the pink um, ray, which is the love ray. You have the gold ray, which is the wisdom ray. And you have the blue ray, which is the power ray. And these three roses feel to me to be probably the most important cards in the deck for us going forward. As we move into these, these um, uh, evolutionary times between 2020 and 2030, it feels to me that these three roses rooted into the um, Divine Feminine Heart Field will be the keynote. How we balance these three energies within us will give us the, um, uh, the amount of light that we can hold that bring the Christed codes within us, that activate the God flame within us. So these have been really um, intense and powerful to bring through. Interestingly, this particular rose um, holds such a lot of light. And she was a rose that I photographed in 2014, actually, when I launched the original uh, Oracle deck at the United Nations in New York. She was a rose from the United Nations Rose Garden. This one is from um, Mottis Font Rose Garden, uh, one of my most favourite rose gardens um, locally to me here near, near Romsey in Hampshire. And this rose is a rose, whoops, <laughs> is a rose from my garden. And how poetic that this is the last rose of the deck. And um, this particular uh, energy, this, this rose that's connected to power and the right use of power, connects in with rose one. And that rose one is base chakra. She's the tribe. She's the DNA of the family of origin that you birthed into. And of course, issues of power or not, power or powerlessness, will often have shown themselves in those early imprints in childhood. So, and this has been the journey of my life, has been to find my voice from um, my own trauma in childhood and to re-empower my feminine. So uh, it's been an interesting journey and I think it's just beautiful that this rose turns out to be the last one in the seven levels that now make the 52 oracle deck. I looked at ways in which I could just have these seven roses printed so that those of you with the first edition of the oracle deck could just add to your deck but I'm having them printed in a different country and from a different printer so there's no way the backs of them would match the original set which was didn't feel good to me um, and it just felt cleaner to be able to print a complete new oracle so you can use the ones from, if you have the oracle, the original oracle, you can use them for charging food and creating grids. Um, but these will be the new ones. So there's, un, there's updated wording in the, um, in the box set with the cards. And there is a Kickstarter campaign active to help me fund this. When I launched the original set in 2014, they, um, I had received a small inheritance from my father 
and it was my father that set the pattern for me in my childhood so I felt it was a really beautiful piece that it was um, uh, funding from him that enabled me to print the roses which have been such a salve and a healer for my journey and a salve and a healer for many. So here we go, this time round I'm, I'm asking for support to, um, and pledges to fund this reprint for them to go further and to touch hearts around the world. When I came to press the button, I drew three cards on the Rose Oracle to, um, to support the process. And I thought to share them with you. There is Rose 11, this real purity of crown and heart chakra to activate the clear love, the pure love codes that the roses carry. Rose Mar 9. I am unconditional love. This is the coding. The roses are pure love. They have no other agenda other than to illuminate for us that which is not. And Rose Bagua 8. And she you can see she's unfurling. She dives deep, but she unfurls. And this rose for me is all about wisdom and self-knowledge and in order to create healthy and whole relationships. So, yeah, the only other thing to share is, you know, the reflection on significant events in our lives and clearly going to the Alhambra in Granada in Spain at 2000, in 2010 was a life significant event for me. And the roses have absolutely changed my life. So. There we are, just sharing the update and the um, link to the Kickstarter campaign should you feel to either share it or to, um, to pledge is on the um, Rose Alchemy page and on my personal page and it will be in the newsletter. There's a newsletter update going out this afternoon. So thank you so much. And um, thank you for believing in me and the roses and following your own rose path too with these beautiful energies. So, till next, with love and rosy blessings. Bye for now. Bye-bye.